Good evening. I was reading around in Philippians some more, and I ran across something that kind of made me feel a little uncomfortable. The Bible does that. It says in there that I should do everything without complaining or arguing. And okay, I try not to get into arguments most of the time. Arguments are aggravating and often pointless and kind of exhausting. You know as well as I do how mind-numbing it is to find yourself in an argument with someone who absolutely refuses to listen. The problem is most of our arguments are with people who just won't listen, and it's because of the reason that they won't listen that we find ourselves arguing with them so strongly. Quick warning, if you suspect the person you're arguing with is being a stubborn, pig-headed fool who just won't listen, stop. Be sure he's not dealing with the same problem. What problem? Well, arguing with you, possibly a person who's being stubborn and pig-headed and yeah. But getting back to Philippians, the passage gets even more uncomfortable because it's from Philippians 2, where Paul tells the people not to do things from selfish ambition or vain conceit, but to, in humility, consider others better than yourselves. And he lifts up as an example Jesus. Have an attitude like Jesus, who was God and who didn't need to grab onto who he was, but he humbled himself and be became obedient to the lowest of deaths, death on a cross. From that lowness, God exalted him to the highest place. Now, I know I will never be exalted to that high a place. Uh, Jesus is at the top place. I don't intend to get anywhere close to that. That's just not likely to happen. But the Bible tells me to humble myself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift me up. And it appears that Jesus demonstrates this to the uttermost. Having made that point, Paul then goes on to say, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his purpose. Work out your salvation. Not that you work it out with a paper and pencil, or that you work it in order to earn it or make it or anything like that. But work it out, meaning live it out. Let your saved relationship with God continue to slip out in your daily life because it's God who works in you to will and to act, to make you want and to make you act according to his purpose. He's at work changing. And I have continued to say variations on the same theme. It's a theme of gentleness and love towards the people around you in particular because they may need it. And... They probably still need it. But on the other hand, it's the theme of God at work in you, making your life transformed, because you and I still need it. But as God is working in you then, and here's where uh, we get to the verse I started with, do everything without complaining and arguing, or, or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe, as you hold out the word of life. Complaining is probably the bigger thing that I might struggle with at this point, but if you think about it, what is complaining anyway, except a thought that somehow my time and my efforts are better than whatever I'm being asked to do or put up with? And am I really better than what I'm being asked to, to put up with? And if you're willing to do something or to put up with something, and you are doing it, then what good is complaining? actually, if you think about it. If you're doing something, if you're putting up with it, that's something sweet. That's something nice. That's a kindness. Why bring down the sweetness of it by some sour words or a sour attitude? Being a gentle, sweet, uncomplaining person might not be as salty as some of us like to think of ourselves, but it might just cause us to shine with a difference that people need to see. And Paul lists doing things without complaining from humility as something that makes us shine like the stars in a warped world. Being gentle and minding your attitude is important because domestic tranquility is an important thing, and oftentimes it starts to come in short supply during times like this. I actually heard tonight that disputes in some parts of the nation are on the rise, domestic disputes, in fact, and attitudes aren't being kept nice, and in worst cases, police are having to deal with that Please pray for their peace and for their safety and patience, but let's let God's love shine in our own homes and lives with some humility and a happiness to serve instead of a grumpiness. We probably will just be inspiring the people we live with, but if we love them, shouldn't we love them enough to inspire them?
And if we're all alone, well, God's still there. And shouldn't we more or less just turn our attention to him anyway? I know. It's not comfortable. I know. It means humbling yourself. I know it means turning to God in prayer. But each day is a new day to walk with God, and each day is a new day for a new attitude. So pray for that attitude. And shine. Shine for those around you. Shine just for who you are and who God is making you to be. But shine as his own. That's all I got for now. Remember, Noman is an island, and you don't have to be either. So call, write, wave at someone in the park and continue to draw near to each other during this time of isolation. Shalom.